Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we'll complete our E1 discussion by analyzing a reaction that has a carbocation rearrangement giving us a completely unexpected product. If you missed the E1 Part 1 video, click here for a brief review of the E1 reaction rate and mechanism. You can catch my entire substitution elimination series on my website, LeiaForSci.com slash substitution dash elimination. Let's see what happens when we react the molecule 2-bromo-3,4-dimethylhexane in a heated solution of methanol. We'll see what happens by analyzing the checklist I use to analyze all substitution and elimination reactions. For a complete guide on how to use this checklist, visit my website laverside.com slash substitution dash elimination. The first thing we'll look at is the alkyl group, but given that this is an elimination reaction, we want to look at the alpha carbon, which is the carbon holding the leaving group, and the beta carbons, which are the carbons directly attached to the alpha carbon. We have a secondary alpha carbon holding a leaving group, which means that a stable carbocation can take place, which allows a one-type, meaning an SN1 or E1 reaction to take place. However, having a secondary leaving group means that we can also have a two-type, meaning an SN2 or E2 reaction, so we can't yet rule them out. Next, we want to look at the beta carbons, or specifically the hydrogens on the beta carbon, meaning beta hydrogens, to determine if we can grab one of them and collapse the electrons towards bromine to kick it out for an elimination product. In this case, we have two different beta carbons, each of which have hydrogens, each of which allow an elimination reaction to take place. Next, we look at the leaving group and verify that bromine, a halogen, is indeed a good leaving group, meaning it can be kicked out and it can also leave by itself. Once again, this tells us nothing regarding SN1, SN2, or E1, E2. Next, we want to look at the attacking nucleophile or base. Given that we're discussing elimination reactions, we're looking at a base, but we don't appear to have one. Instead, the only thing we seem to have is methanol as our solvent, which means we have a solvolysis reaction. Recall that solvolysis implies that the solvent molecule is also the attacking molecule. Methanol has two lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen, making it a weak nucleophile or base. The fact that it's neutral means it's not strong enough to attack the molecule directly and kick out the bromine. This eliminates the two-type, meaning SN2 or E2. However, if the bromine leaves by itself and a carbocation forms, the methanol will be strong enough to attack, meaning we can have both an SN1 and an E1 reaction take place. In this video, we're focusing on the elimination product, but don't rule out S01 as that can also happen. Next, we look at methanol from the solvent perspective and determine that it's polar protic, meaning it can stabilize any charges that form in solution, including the bromine leaving group and any carbocations that form. And finally, we have the addition of heat. Heat simply tells us that the elimination product will be favored over substitution, and that once again helps... By looking at all of this together, we determine that yes, an E1 reaction can take place. Now that we know the E1 reaction can take place, let's see if we can come up with a product before we even start the mechanism. Since the elimination reaction involves the removal of a beta hydrogen and the formation of a pi bond between the alpha and beta carbon, let's identify the beta hydrogens and then determine where the new pi bonds can form. We have a tertiary beta carbon and therefore a tertiary beta hydrogen on the right, which I'll show in green. And we have a primary carbon, therefore three primary beta hydrogens, which I show in blue. If we eliminate a blue beta hydrogen, we get this product shown with a pi bond on the left. If we eliminate the green beta hydrogen, we get this pi bond shown with a product on the right. In order to determine which is the more stable product, we want to refer to Zaitsev's rule, which tells me the more substituted pi bond will form. This is something I went into great detail in E1 video part 2. A quick analysis shows the blue elimination giving me a monosubstituted product, and the green elimination giving me a tri-substituted product. It appears that we're going to eliminate the green hydrogen and form the tri-substituted product, but this is actually a trick question, and the tri-substituted product will actually not be the most stable molecule we can form. Let's see what happens when we look at the mechanism. To start this reaction, we show the bromine leaving group grabbing the hydrogens that connect it to carbon and breaking away from the molecule. This is characteristic of an SO1 or E1 reaction where we have a carbocation formation as that first or rate determining step. 
and this is where it gets tricky. We have a carbocation on a secondary carbon which is considered relatively stable. Directly near this carbocation we have a tertiary carbon where if positive would be so much more stable. So the next step in this reaction is an unexpected hydride shift or carbocation rearrangement where hydrogen will take its bonding electrons, break away from the tertiary carbon and move over to that secondary carbon. This makes the secondary carbon neutral and the tertiary carbon is now a more stable carbocation. Now that the carbocation shifted, we have a new alpha carbon, which means we have to analyze new beta carbons to determine what will be our ultimate elimination product. To make matters worse, it appears that we now have three unique beta carbons and therefore three new potential products. Let's redraw this and take a look. To the left of the alpha carbon, we have a secondary beta carbon with two hydrogens, which we'll show in green. Below the carbocation, we have a primary beta carbon with three hydrogens, which I'll show in blue. And to the right of the carbocation, we have a tertiary beta carbon with one hydrogen, which we'll show in purple. Three new beta hydrogens gives me three new products. We can eliminate the green hydrogen. We can eliminate the blue hydrogen and the purple hydrogen for three completely different products. How do we determine which is most stable? Once again, refer to Zaitsev's rule, figure out which pi bond is more substituted and that will be your most stable or major product. The green pi bond has one, two, three substituents, making it tri-substituted. The blue pi bond has two substituents, making it di-substituted. And finally, the purple pi bond has one, two, three and four substituents, making it tetra-substituted. The final product has the most substituents, making it the most stable pi bond and therefore the major product in this reaction. The tri-substituted is a little less stable, making it the middle product, and the di-substituted is the least stable, making it the minor product in this reaction. So the key here, once again, is to figure out what's your most stable product, but not to forget that in an E1 reaction, you can have a carbocation rearrangement and the product may be completely unexpected. I work through many more examples, ranging from easy and tricky E1 reactions in my online membership site. You can find information at studyhall.layerforside.com forward slash join. You can also catch my entire series on substitution and elimination on my website, layerforside.com slash substitution dash elimination. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.